Anime or Japanese animation has been a growing community ever since the early 2000s, and even probably before that. Tracing back to the popularity of Speed Racer in the 1960s all the way to the explosion that was Attack on Titan in 2013, anime has played a major role in pop culture. Stories such as Hot Topic and FYE, or FI, however you want to pronounce it, have whole sections dedicated to the genre. Streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon also have entire categories for average anime viewers and even diehard fans. Netflix even recently went as far as to label anime as Netflix Originals, even though, between you and me, <clears throat> they're not. And Crunchyroll and Funimation established themselves as big names in the community, each with their own streaming services. But was it always like this? To see the community's growth, we must first look into its past, a time when anime was rarely known, spoke of, or nearly impossible to watch. Well, legally anyway. Hi, I'm RJ Lane, and today we'll be discussing anime's growth and how the culture has expanded into the West to what it is today. This is On The Rise, where we discuss anime reviews, topic posts, and debates. And if you like this kind of stuff, subscribe, for this is the only one of only many videos. Anyway, on with the video. Before streaming services came around, consuming media produced outside the United States tended to be a little on the difficult side. Especially when you were a child like me with little no internet access. Shows like DBZ, Pokemon that aired on TV were the only ways for me and like-minded anime viewers to view animation from Japan. And on top of that, I didn't even know what anime was back then. I just knew that these shows had something I liked. Nevertheless, this was the start. When anime started to become more relevant and more into the mainstream, as some people would call it, well, I didn't call it that. I kind of called it the Funimation expansion. Now, don't get me wrong, some titles had already made it to West prior to the Funimation expansion. Astro Boy in 1965, Gundam in 1994, and even Dragon Ball was licensed with several other companies before Funimation got its hands on it. Then the expansion came. After several money and licensing issues, Funimation acquired the rights to over 30 titles from Jinion, excuse my pronunciation, and the now deceased, rest in peace, ADV Films only to later sign a deal with Toei, the people behind favorites like DBZ, One Piece, Toriko, to stream their anime through Funimation's websites and Hulu. And this is where I first took notice. Suddenly, anime started to become easier to find. Stores started to sell DVDs, posters. You'd go to places like Walmart and find box sets of your favorite anime that just aired on TV, such as Inuyasha and Naruto. I remember as a middle schooler rushing into Walmart's poster section to find hidden Naruto and DBZ posters hanging up. Anime merchandise like toys and video games started to become more popular. Hell, the Ultimate Ninja and Budokai series were taking the PlayStation by storm. Paying respects to the greatest BBZ game. <clears throat> Excuse me. Something in the air. Studio Ghibli films were getting dubbed by Disney. Even John Lasseter, the man behind Toy Story and one of the founding photos of Pixar, spent a whole minute before Spirited Away aired on American television telling the audience why they should watch the film. If you're not a media head, then you really don't understand how huge that is, but that's a pretty big honor. Anime was no longer in the dark. By the time I reached high school, Hulu had a whole section of anime straight from Japan, and sites like Crunchyroll finally started to get the recognition they deserved. Anime was no longer a hidden gem. The explosion of social media brought new and old fans alike to finally tell the world, hey, we exist. And although I'm not going to say it was cool to be an anime fan at the time, it was definitely a great feeling to see the community I love grow before my eyes. And then, it happened. 2014, Funimation brought Dragon Ball to the big screen. I am shooketh. What the fuck happened? Now, this wasn't the first time an anime film had been shown in theaters, but none had compared to the sheer hype and scale that was behind Battle of the Gods theatrical release. Once again, anime had entered the public eye like never before. People who just watched Dragon Ball began to watch similar shows due to Funimation's constant advertising. Funimation began its simuldub program, giving English dub watchers the same weekly experience as if they were actually watching it on TV. 
Crunchyroll partnered up with several other channels to create Ver, a streaming service that's probably one of the best ways to not only watch anime, but several other cartoons as well. Netflix began its anime takeover following the success of Seven Deadly Sins anime, giving Netflix subscribers Be the Beginning, one of my own personal favorites from 2018, Children of the Whales, Violet Evergarden English dubbed, and Castlevania, just to name a few. A small community that was once anime started to appear in the average person's lives. From parade floats, more theatrical releases, whole DVD section stores like Best Buy, YouTubers, bloggers, and even the upcoming Olympics. The list goes on. More anime began to air every season, giving the average viewer over a thousand titles to watch a year. Classes were either remastered on Blu-ray, rebooted, or continued. And although I didn't cover all the major accomplishments that the anime community has had, to even name the ones that happened in the last past five years alone would be impossible for one video. Well, not impossible, it's just it would be a really long video, and I would have to do a lot of research, and I was probably a little dramatic with that last line, but you guys get my point. Basically. The point of me making this video is not only introduce you to us here at On The Rise, but to shine some light on my views of the anime community as a whole. I view the growth of the community as a good thing for the most part, and I'm curious to see what's in store for the rest of me and my fellow otaku. I know this video is short, very opinionated, and I didn't really cover everything, but this is just an introduction video to our channel. So if you want us to review a specific anime or video game, leave a comment. If you're curious to see what else the channel puts on, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Please, we have good content coming, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I'm RJ Lane, and this has been On the Rise.